I'm really, really, really excited to invite Krish, who's the Vice President and Head of the Flipkart USD, US R&D Center, to kick off today's session, where he will be moderating a very interesting curated Q&A session titled AI in Retail with Suresh Kumar, Executive Vice President, Global Chief Technology Officer and Chief Development Officer, Walmart Inc. Let me introduce Krish before we start. Dr. Ganpati Krishnan is the VP of Engineering, leading our Flipkart USD, US R&D Center. Krish has been passionate about artificial intelligence from his graduate school days at Sunny Buffalo, where he worked on computer vision and neural networks for his PhD dissertation. He taught computer science for about eight years before joining the corporate world. Prior to joining Flipkart, he led data science teams at Microsoft, Amazon, and Sweetgreen. And prior to Microsoft, he founded two technology companies with very, very successful exits. His recent interests are in deep learning, natural language understanding, and conversational bots, and creating social impact in India. Without further ado, why don't you take it away, Krish? Thank you, Ambika. I'm delighted to welcome Suresh Kumar, global CTO and CDO of Walmart a company with over $500 billion in revenues, a massive network of stores, and a rapidly growing e-commerce operation. Prior to this, Suresh worked in executive positions at Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. He spent over 15 years at Amazon, where he managed a global team of over 500 engineers. Suresh was with Amazon during the rapidly growing years and dealt with an enormous level of complexity and responsibility. Suresh has a PhD from Princeton University and a bachelor's degree from IIT Madras, where he received a Distinguished Alumnus Award. I'm especially excited about the Distinguished Alumnus Award because I come from the same university as Suresh. Thank you, Suresh, and welcome. Welcome, Suresh. Thank you, Chris. It's so good to be uh, with you, the Flipkart team. Um, I actually started uh, with the Flipkart team as a board member about, for about a, a year or so. Um, really enjoyed learning more about the business, getting to know the talented team. Uh, and by the way, congratulations on your uh, big billion days event. I saw that you sold a lot of TVs and a whole lot of mobile phones as well. So congratulations. Thank you, Suresh. So, um, so I wanted to get started with um, some of your experiences in the retail industry. So there are many, many applications of AI and ML in the retail industry. Could you share a couple of success stories in this area that have resulted in a big impact? Uh, so Chris, there is absolutely no doubt about it. ML and AI uh, will have the most profound impact in terms of disruption of retail. And they're really actually giving new power to our customers and also to our associates today. Um, so AI and, AI and ML, uh, they underpin a large and growing share of what we do and what we'll continue doing. Uh, everything from everyday operations in our stores to powering our home office associates, making data-driven decisions, providing customers with features, that really help them with frictionless shopping. So the ways in which retail has uh, really applied AI and ML throughout the pandemic, I think this is going to have a lasting impact. There are really countless individual success stories, but when you bring them all together, you actually see the rapid acceleration of how AI and ML are really transforming operations on one side and then customer experiences on the other side. So for us, actually, the volume, online volume, uh, scaled so very quickly during the pandemic that ML really helped us deploy um, thousands of additional stores as fulfillment hubs. In about four months, we brought all of these things together because we were able to crunch all the data to figure out from where to really start shipping an order if a consumer lives, let's say, in Seattle, and he has ordered three different items. Right. So this is one way where ML has helped us optimize the last mile delivery and find the most efficient and the fastest way to deliver. 
Um, this is particularly relevant, of course, given all the current issues of the global supply chain, where ML is optimizing inventory management as another example, right? So we built machine learning model to optimize the timing and pricing of markdowns. Uh, this one particular effort saved over $30 million in markdown costs. So now we are going a lot further. We are building algorithms to better forecast demand. We are optimizing both the location and the quantity of inventory, reduce the need even to have markdowns in the first place. So those are one type of things. Another area where we are really using AI is on our associate side. We are using AI to make our associates' lives better. As you know, Walmart is a people-led, tech-empowered company, and we are applying AI in ways to reflect that. So for anyone who has worked in a store or in a fulfillment center, doing manual inventory, this might be one of the most painful jobs. So what we did is we built an in-stock assistant. It's an AI-powered application that automatically detects and it starts correcting it, uh, inaccurate inventory. So it's a lot more easier than manual counting. And this is one of the ways in which these technologies are actually helping us make decisions better, faster, and off the sales floor. So lots and lots of different uh, areas, both on the consumer side and uh, in terms of how we run our business. Suresh, this is so great to see, especially since I uh, started in AI many, many years back when I couldn't see any great applications for it. And it's amazing to see that a leading company like Walmart is using it. Uh, of course, in Flipkart, we use it quite a bit as well. But one of the things I'd love to understand from you is uh, going forward, what are some of the untapped opportunities uh, of AI and ML? And do you think that they're more on the consumer side or on the back-end infrastructure logistics led? Where do you think the opportunities are? Yeah, Krish, I think uh, that we will see better applications on both consumer-facing uh, sides as well as on how we run business. Um, on the uh, consumer-facing side, I think that personalization and computer vision are turning out to be really, really big opportunities for e-commerce. Um, they're all multifaceted. Some aspects uh, uh, around the consumer-led uh, behavior really, I think, fundamentally are about making shopping uh, friction-free, more enjoyable. And then there are other areas which are really driven by operational needs. So let's actually start with the personalization, right? So what ML and AI now allow us to do, which is unbelievable even a few years back, is that it allows you to have true one-on-one -on -one personalization at scale across all the digital ch channels. So consumers are actually now expecting you to know their preferences in order to help them save time and make life easier. Right, so across Walmart today, customers are being served product recommendations that are based upon their previous behavior, their location, but there are really some other uh, innovative ways in which we are using ML and other new tech to start personalizing their uh, e-commerce experiences. So one example is predictive baskets. So today, grocery customers typically have about 30 items in their online order. Uh, you know how it is when I go to to shop i have a list sometimes i forget a bunch of stuff then i come back and i find out that the the item that i wanted to buy uh, you know i forgot about all about uh, buying that so to simplify the basket building process we have built ml um we have got algorithms that get data from all the different channels all the omni-channel data and they predict the entire basket along with really appropriate quantities as well. So this manifests itself as the quick ad experience on our homepage. And what we're seeing is more than 25% of the customers see that the quick ad experience uh, and we are seeing really wide adoption. So the algorithm also suggests what you may have forgotten when you go to checkout. This is something that happens to me all the time. And it's fantastic to see how machines are now helping making our lives a whole lot better. It predicts the time to reorder. It sends timely reminders to our customers. We are seeing great adoption over there. Another area, again, on the customer side of things, is around smart substitutions. So when an item is ordered by a customer, let's say that it is not available, it has gone out of stock during a pick walk by our associate. 
personalization offers really personal substitutes to our associates right so these substitutes are learned actually using a deep neural network over historical data pertaining to substitutable products uh, acceptance and semantic uh, modes of catalog and then we personalize the, uh, the substitutes further by really accounting for the customer's preferences whether it's direct uh, dietary preferences historical interactions with substitutes all of these things come together in the technology really simplifies the decision making process the associate doesn't have to do anything the algorithm suggests what they need to do and it allows them to prepare orders quickly and it allows them to uh, make it more efficiently significant savings as a much and as well as a much better customer experience as well so that's on the on the personalization side computer vision also has got really really great potential it's one of these technologies that really make it natural for our associates and also for our, for our customers to interact with our systems cognitively of course visual cues are a lot easier for humans to to digest it's more intuitive for our associates and so what we did is we created something that i'm really really proud of it's called wispic it's very very cool it allows our associates to go into the back room point the phone at the shelf and it tells you which cases need to come onto the floor so imagine what technology can uh, like that can do in a large e-commerce uh, warehouse so lots of different uh, areas there from a customer uh, standpoint visual search this is another interesting use of uh, computer vision often it's really actually easier to uh, for a user to just snap a picture rather than trying to describe all the different uh, things about the product in words and on the purely digital side we bought a technology company that actually provides a virtual fitting room so when you're shopping online so imagine you're looking at a new jacket online you can actually view yourself wearing to see how it looks and it again uses advanced ml so these are some of the uh, the areas where i think ai and ml are going to continue to uh, to deliver really really great experiences both for customers and on the back end as well for our associates uh, suresh i love some of these stories um, especially when it reduces the cognitive load for the shopper and for people who are trying to work in the back office um, and i'd love to understand um, I know that you've been on the Flipkart board for a year or so, and uh, love to get your thoughts on how AI can help us break, break through penetration barriers in a country like India. Any thoughts on that? Of course, I, uh, Chris, I think growing mobile penetration in India, this really has accelerated e-commerce. Digital liter literacy has increased. Uh, it's driving more acceptance and usage. In last year, I think, we have seen further growth for e-commerce as people have moved to buying online while they're staying at home. Now, as many of the new customers have come online, yeah, I think it's played a really, really important role in many aspects of, uh, of e-commerce. Really helping scale to meet the right the rising demand from uh, developing more efficient logistics networks, predicting customer demand more effectively, better customer service, now, while doing all of this, achieving immense scale, there is also a lot of potential to enable new product planning and development, delivery uh, agent assistance, identifying opportunities for value creation for the price sensitive Indian customer. So lots and lots of opportunities, especially when I look at India and how well Flipkart is doing, I think AI and ML are going to continue to play a really, really important role in terms of serving the Indian customer better. Yes, India has really come a long way since the time I left India. And I, I really like to see how this the mobile revolution has taken over India. When I was growing up in India, we used to have a landline. And now nobody has a landline in India. And we used to wait a long time to get that connection too. <laughs> exactly. It used to take a year. And when you got a landline, you were so thrilled when you got a landline. But Everyone's on mobile phones with high speed internet and so on. I think that's really revolutionizing. And so great to see some of these uh, developments in India. And, uh, you know, India is an amazing country as you know, you, are, you and I are both from India. 
and in terms of size, diversity, purchasing power of its customers. And uh, I think that we have amazing technical talent in terms of uh, the tech, uh, data scientists, engineering, and so on. Uh, what are some of the areas that you think the next generation of AI uh, data scientists um, should uh, focus on? What are their unique opportunities? Where should they be thinking about solving problems? Absolutely, Krish. I You're absolutely right. The diversity and the scale of the Indian customer uh, is really mind-blowing for me. And one of the most significant opportunities for data science in India is really the application of AI and ML uh, to improve recommendations for, uh, for customers. So India's size and diversity create the need for e-commerce to be relevant and inclusive as well. So to make targeted recommendations that's really based upon the person's location, right down to the pin code where they are in, and really to the language that they probably speak. So I think there are several opportunities with vernacular, um, simple multimodal interfaces uh, like chatbots and assistants, using technologies like uh, automated speech recognition, text to speak, natural language processing. So I know that Flipkart is really at the forefront of this. And I know that your team here in Seattle has been playing a really integral part. All of these things are helping the Indian customer. Um, given the price sensitive Indian customer, I think AI can also help optimize production, um, inventories to reduce cost. AI can help businesses with their supply chain. Um, it's, it can help make products available to customers at the right time, at the right place, at the right price. Now, everyday low cost is Walmart's operating model. Lower costs obviously drive lower prices. And AI really can help in that. But AI has also got tremendous potential to create even more opportunities. Um, in India, we can continue to start bringing in Kiranas, right? uh, MSMEs, uh, artisans into the digital commerce system. Walmart and Flipkart, uh, they provide insights to, to help these businesses. And AI can help predict demand and consumer trends. Um, all of these things can come together to create a really, really vibrant uh, ecosystem. And AI and ML play a very integral part in this. That's such an awesome message to all the new data scientists. We're just getting started. Uh, so when I see AI, uh, all the different applications of AI, if I'm a data scientist, I'm going to be really excited that there's so many places that I can apply my expertise. Absolutely. And um, one of the things that um, is, um, which always uh, we think about, you know, as AI scientists and so on, is that there's been a lot of hype in AI. And what happens is when there's a lot of hype, you don't deliver according to expectations and so on, right? Um, so what is what practical advice can you give uh, organizations and companies in India that want to actually use AI to enhance their business operations? Krish, I really think that uh, the time has really come for AI and ML to be really mature uh, technologies that are going to become an integral part of how we uh, operate. So my advice really is to take a holistic view. Uh, choose to imagine by looking at entire processes um, rather than applying technology in a piecemeal fashion. Don't overlook the infrastructure. Um, what's the tech stack? How is that going to enable AI? Everything needs to come together. So at Walmart, we built a hybrid cloud that is really suited for Walmart's unique needs. Uh, leveraging the cloud has enabled us to unleash the potential for uh, AI across our entire business. And as with any retail decision, keep your customer and the desired business outcome at the center. Without these, it doesn't matter. Even the most advanced technology is not going to yield any good results. And like any good technologist, test, learn, and keep continuously improving. In fact, that is at the heart of ML, as, as we all know. That's uh, that's really awesome. So really, it's all about solving customer problems and not about not about a technology itself. Um, uh, absolutely. And I, I, I resonate with that uh, feeling a lot. Um, and I'm going to put you on the spot here, Suresh. So um, 
you know, this has nothing to do with AI, but I'd love to understand what is the secret of your success in the corporate world and life? And, uh, and what are some of the lessons that you can, uh, um, you know, impart to uh, a lot of people who are just starting out in the technology world? Well, thank you, Chris. And thank you for those kind words, but that's a really big question. So if I take a step back, I remember my parents often uh, used to remind me that, hey, material things can be taken away, but what you learn is going to stay with you forever. So I learn a lot every single day at Walmart. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why I love being here so much. So that's one thing, keep learning all the time. I'll offer a few other takeaways as well. As a technologist, to be a strategic business partner, you really need to understand the business and you need to understand the customer beyond your specific uh, remit. So here at Walmart, um, technologists really have a seat at the table alongside our customer, our product um, and our business teams. So we go deep into the state of the business, what customers are telling us, what are the emerging trends, uh, what's going on with operations and a whole lot more. And this really helps us move faster and provide greater value. So that I think is very important. Remain focused on the things that truly matter, that add value to the end customers. Put yourself in their shoes. Empathy. Uh, this really helps deliver great products and uh, deliver on the expectations. And lastly, another thing is that you surround yourself with smart, passionate people who have truly diverse experiences. They can bring in an entire spectrum of different perspectives in actually solving problems for the customer as well. So always think about what skills you possess that are transferable versus the skills that you need to learn. So one secret to personal growth is actually standing firm in an area that you're comfortable with while also taking license to try something new. So stay open and stretch yourself. That's what I've been doing all my life. And it has definitely helped me a lot as well. I, I love I love this advice. It's really keep it simple, stay focused, focus on the customer and keep learning. This is how I'd summarize what you told us. Uh, and it's it's obviously a great formula. It seems very old fashioned, very <laughs> old, but old fashioned is very good. So uh, thank you, Suresh. Thank you for taking the time with us really really appreciate uh, taking the time out of your busy day to spend time with us um thank you chris so much for uh, inviting me it has been fantastic talking to you and best of luck in the seattle office and uh with flipkart as well congratulations on all the successes thank you suresh and back to you Ambika. Thank you so much, Suresh and Krish. I don't think we could have had a better set of leaders come together to discuss this trending topic.